my channel. I'm streaming. So in this video, I decided to share about this general approach for any chemistry question for the A-levels. And trying not playing practice papers, looking at my past exams, I think this approach is gonna help. So what is this approach? It's right here, right? Let's understand what is this approach. In summary, first you need to identify the topic, then understand what are command words, then look at predict the mark allocations. And that really helped me push from the consistent Bs slowly to the A's, closer to the prelims and the A levels, okay? So I think for you the guys to get convinced why this approach would work, is because number one, for those of you guys who are struggling with A-level chemistry, more than just the content, is about confidence, correct? And I think it's a bit more philosophical, but I don't want you guys to have too much overconfidence, which is a great trap that sets apart good scoring people and bad scoring people. Oh no! Too much confidence, right, will pull your marks down. You neglect small, small nuances and small, small command words that could have easily gotten you marks. Because chemistry, right, requires you a balance between confidence versus discipline. Okay? So you need both. Secondly, it helps you avoid common mistakes. So, because these common mistakes, right, cost a lot of time, number one, and your energy. And it's not worth it. For example, during an exam, they ask you to draw the structure of A, but you draw the structure of B accidentally. Or you draw the skeletal formula and not the molecular formula or the displayed formula. Only guys to have confidence, discipline, and to avoid common mistakes as much as possible. So let's get right into what this approach means. I have three exam papers right here where I'll be taking some example questions to show you guys what I mean. But the first thing you need to do, right, is to identify the topic. And why is this especially important for chemistry to ask? Chemistry takes many, many different topics. Chemistry flexes because it integrates many topics in one question. So your main point is to take out the root topic. Okay, to get this mathematics analogy right here. So take out the root topic. So I have a question right in front of your screen. When you look at this question, you look like, oh, it's an organic chem question. I think you'll be scared of. I look at benzene rings. So it's probably a question on arenes. Okay, involving benzene rings. So once you know it's an arenes topic and an organic chem question, any organic chem question, right, centers, when you ever see organic chem question, always identify the type of reaction that's involved. So in this case, for this question, right, arenes involve electrophilic substitution. They take part in electrophilic substitution reactions, okay? So once you know the type of reaction, you know generally what's going to happen in the question, okay? Now, what if it's not organic chem topic, you look at another question and it's like an inorganic chem topic. An inorganic chem topic, right, generally I want you guys to identify because an organic chem contains periodic table and it contains transition metals and electrochem as well. Know what period, what group elements they are testing. So I'll give you a couple of examples. They may test you a group 2 element. They may test you a group 17 element, element which in the case of halogens, correct? Or they may ask you on transition metals. So that's all for identifying a topic, okay? Just identify the main topic and let's proceed to the second one. So the second step you need to do is to identify the command words. What are command words? Okay, basically right, if you actually tune in to the A-level syllabus document and scroll all the way down, okay, scroll all the way down, you literally see this whole list of command words. Describe, explain, suggest, Hence, predict all those kind of command words. You need to focus on them and give the appropriate amount of time and information. Because most people, right, they become a big, big problem, right? Is they become overconfident. And when you guys become overconfident, you lose focus on these command words and you are like, I'm going to share and bust out my knowledge in front of the examiners and flex in front of them. 
and then you're like, you spend too much time, you literally work overtime, you write too much stuff that you could have just spent the rest of the time for some other hard question or some other extra marks. Because chemistry already is very hard to time manage and that's why I'm providing you really good tips in this video, okay? So let's go to the syllabus document that each command word, right? Think of the best approach for it. So for example, right? I have an example right in front of you for this question, the same question. State the reagents and conditions needed for step one and two. What you need to do is just state. So for the state question, right? You just state. No need for explanation. You just write it down from whatever you memorize, correct? So concentrated H2SO4, HNO3, heat. That's it. You write it down and get your mark. Okay, so what you want to do, right? These state questions is where you spend the least time on. Those explanation questions are where you spend, okay? You spend the most time on, okay? So you focus more on the explanation because state is just regurgitation, right? And what happens if you don't focus on the command words? Not just the command words, guys. It's also small, small little elements in the question that you forgot to underline or forgot to highlight and you forget it. So I have two examples, all from one of the papers that I did. So my answers are just free for you guys to see. Very simple one is SI versus silicon versus sulfur. Screwed up. I didn't know which, I confused, I did not read it correctly. And I just waste a simple form. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine and you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never... Equation for phosphorus conversion to BH3 and I accidentally wrote H plus. Bruh. Simple marks. Such a waste, okay? So just focus on the command words. You state, you state. Explain, you explain. You describe, you describe. And especially if you look a bit closer, right below that equation, you see the word it. This is a super annoying problem that I think I've faced a lot of times and I emphasized it right in my notes. Never ever use the word it, it, it. Again and again, especially for your explanation question. Because the examiner will like, lose focus on what you're talking about, what is the it referring to. So, two things you can do, right? If you are not lazy and write out the entire name, but if you're lazy and a bit more artistic and creative, just take your time and just draw it out. So for example, is this big like phenol, some big phenol structure that goes like this with an NH2, it's some weird double bond O. Instead of finding a stupid name that's in the question, just draw it out and it totally works, okay? So that's for command words. Next proceed, step three, which is the final final step. Alright guys, I believe so far it's helping you out at least a little bit. So step three will probably sum it up, which is mark allocation. I believe like this is not really a perspective of a student, but more of a perspective of a teacher. Because when teachers set paper, they want to mark allocate, right? So when you know the game, you can do it well. When you know what how teachers set questions, you do it well. So what are mark allocations, okay? I have a great example, which I happen to have it here. At a constant temperature, the volume of the uh, uh, explain the effect this will have on the partial pressures of the individual gases and the composition of the reaction mixture. So the first thing, right, you look at this question, you look at, yes, of course, you identify the topic, and the topic is gaseous state, okay? And when you look at this, it says, how many marks? Four marks. So you look at the number of marks, and number of marks Use the number of marks as a gauge to the number of points you are supposed to write. Or the number of keywords, the number of concepts you should be highlighting so the examiner can take it using the marking scheme. Okay? So for this one, right, it's in what's the command word? Explain. So you're supposed to explain, not just state and just move on. Explain in detail. Explain fully such that you understand it and the examiner understands it, okay? More about this actually in the next video about time management in chemistry but the focus of this part, mark allocation, is explain the effect it'll have on partial pressures and the composition. So there are two components, right? So look at the number of components in the question. There are two components 
they need to address in the question stem. The partial pressures and the composition. Believe one out, the, no matter how long you write, you only get two marks. Correct? So you need to talk about both partial pressures. What is the concept they are probably testing you? I think looking at this question is something to do with equilibrium. Again, so it's a blend between gaseous state and equilibrium. Many topics. That's what makes chemistry flex more than the other science. So let me branch a little bit into the think of the concepts tested because I think a lot of people have doubts along this region. I did talk about this in my A-level chem macro mind map video. If you guys have watched it, the link is up there as well as in the description. It's a really great video because, and I'll just touch on some of the points that will really help you guys, okay? So if a question asks you, okay, so let's expand. If a question asks you on stability of reactions, right? The concepts, right? The possible concepts they're testing on could be energetics, kinetics, or equilibrium. It has to be these, any of these three things. So probably something. So this, in this case, in this question is equilibrium. If not for the stability of reactions, they test you on why, okay? Look at the example right in front of you actually, F part one. Explain why the cationic intermediate of styrene is stable. In this question, it's because the benzylic carbon, right, has an empty orbital, correct? It has an empty orbital, so the electrons of the benzene ring delocalize over that carbon and creates extra stability and resonance. So I wouldn't want to go too deep into that, but that is what they are asking. So in this case, they're talking about the stability of not the reaction, but molecules. So when they, when they test you on stability of molecules, certain concept that they may be testing you on, besides this, is the ATR theory, atomic structure, hand bonding, and last one, dependence. Sorry for the untidy handwriting. This is so, so important. This provides a bit of security of what the possible concepts that's being tested. And in fact, right, stability of molecules determine the stability of the reactions. Quite an additional point, but think about this point as well. That is the three basic steps. I'm defining the topic, looking at the command words, looking at the small nuances and the elements in the question, and then predicting the mark allocation from the lens of a teacher setting the paper. Okay? So hopefully you apply it like I showed to any A-level chemistry question, any of your practice papers. Try to drill this. It takes a lot of practice. Let's put hashtag practice in my Instagram post. It requires a lot of practice. The more you try, I believe you guys will do well for your A-level chemistry exams, alright? Please click on the subscribe button, leave a thumbs up if this video has helped you a lot. Share it with your friends and stay tuned for my next video. Thank you.